I made the fattest, most full track ever, and I'm gonna show you how I did it with synth layering. All right, guys, here's the session. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the drop, these different synths that I'm using. I'm using a bunch of them. This is what the first three synths together sound like. Okay, so what we got here is this MIDI going on. The same thing is being played by three different synths and they're being run through a layer. So you load a layer in the plugin section and then you basically just select three synths and then click the set children thing and it'll play all of them from the same MIDI. So here's one of the layers. So you can hear they're all playing the same chords and notes but they have a slight different sonic tonality to them because they're being made with different synths and different synths kind of just have different tones to them. And so when you layer multiple, multiple of them together, they create a really thick pad. This one, I was trying to recreate the synth from Maddie and Song OK, and I used Silent One. And essentially it's just a patch where it's like a saw wave and it has um, the cutoff being like like that in the ADSR, adjust the attack. Just I have the attack up a little bit, so it's like a little bit of a boom. You kind of mess with it until you, it kind of gets the right speed that you want it. And then I only have like really light EQing on this, so that's cap. There's actually more EQing than I thought. But I kind of have each one of these on their own separate channel, and they are all routed to this pads bus where I can add even more effects, even more EQs to kind of fit them all together. So yeah, that was the first layer. And then the second layer with harmless. And this was me trying to recreate shelter chords, so. So this is the same exact techniques I used for the Silent One one, where it has, well, that's kind of weird to say, where it has the same filter thing happening, but just the fact that it's a different synth gives it a different tone. And then the third one is Serum. So yeah, all three of those together make this sound. So to save CPU, what I did was I bounced that into audio and turned it into that. So I would suggest that if you're having CPU issues, which we all do, we all have those. So next I had this layer, I called it Max Synth, because it's sort of like a Max Martin sounding synth. Just a lot more basic. There's no like, these other pads had a lot of detuning and widening to make them like blurred together, but this synth, I just use a simple three osc, and then it's wide and everything, but it's not detuned, so this the sh the saw waves are still like sharp sounding, and these are really thin, and so I'm just kind of providing extra high frequencies and sharpness to that pad layer. So now, if you listen to them together, yeah, so that sounds like brighter and sharper mixed with those really thick pads. And then here I had actually an older version of this song where I did a different set of pads that didn't sound quite as good. And this is what they sounded like. It didn't quite hit enough for me, so I didn't use it as the main pads. But since I already had them, I added that to the layers that I already have. And that just made it thicker. That's the cool thing is like when you're making songs and you want to get a big sound, even if you want to make a simple song, honestly, a lot of the answer is having the same exact part, but being played by different things that have a slight difference in tonality. And then you just end up getting a, the same part. So the listener thinks it's just one thing, but it's really a bunch of things that's complementing it and making it just really big. And so when you have an old sound that you didn't like as the main part anymore, you can throw it back in and tuck it in just a little bit and then you have an extra weight to your whole entire layering. I also have this white noise. And that way I can individually control the high end of this whole pad sequence. And that's more of a smooth high end. So I have this max synth, which is like a sharp high end. And then that white noise is like a smooth high end and then put those all together. And in the final mixing stage, I leveled that out a little bit better, but this was during the production stage where I'm kind of getting all these layers together. I also have this pad going on in the background. And that's just low frequencies. There's nothing high distracting going on. And that's kind of keeping it the momentum going with like a smooth, not as choppy sound. And I have this, which is carrying the high frequencies. When we have all those pads together, this is what it sounds like. Yeah. 
It's just pretty huge already. And I haven't even gone through the bass yet. So if you listen to the bass, it's a similar technique. I'm playing the same parts. So first we have this like smooth, uh, not smooth, but like consistent sustained bass. And that's going along with that pad I just showed you. Here we have the big layers that are playing the same rhythm as the chords. These are also three layers, I believe. So we got this sharp mono one, which is the similar technique like I was showing you with the other Mac synth where it's like sharp and pinpointed. And it kind of has that like top sharpness and high frequency that's gonna stand out in the mono. And then we have a wide one, which is just, I think probably the same patch as the pad, just played on a lower note. And then we have this one, that one's doing a lot of the heavy work. So that one is Serum, just with a couple saw waves and just slightly detuned with the low pass filter going down with each MIDI note. And it has quite a few effects on it. So without effects, it sounds like this. And then with effects, just kind of makes it louder, a little bit crunchier. And so when you have all those three together, and they're all um, in the same bass bus, just like the synths. And then, of course, we have the sub bass. And if you notice from the other basses I just showed you, all of the low end, like the really sub low end, was kind of high passed because this singular sub bass is going to do all of the heavy work on the really low frequencies and like the foundation of the mix. So when we have those together, it's so thick. So together, that's like, I don't know, like 12 or 15 layers. And you don't always need that, but for a song like this, it really served the song really well because they were just slightly different and they all had their own place and their own unique contribution to the sound. So the end result is gonna be this like really huge, simple pad thing, but it's just like extremely thick. Then I can bounce all these and go to the, my mixing session and EQ them and make them all fit together nicely to be an end product. Now that I showed you all these layers, I'm going to quickly open the final mixing project so you can kind of hear a little bit more clearly how they all sound with the rest of the track. 10 seconds later. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> so this is the mixing project. It's pretty massive and I pretty much maxed this out. I maxed out my last project like to the absolute max and then maxed this one out mixing it as well. So here's the final drop with all of those synths that I showed you. Wow. That's special. So I have all the synths bounced into their own respective channels with the side chain from the kick printed in. A bass. And then this new really sharp bass. I think I added this later on. And then also a real bass that I added last minute. So yeah, with all those in their individual parts, I can go into the mix and do some final EQing, adding some transients with transient processor, a little bit of a compressor as well, and some more EQ and then a final compressor, multiband compressor, which I'm pretty sure I just used to automate the mids out to make room for the vocal during certain parts of the song. Just wanted to achieve the most fattest, biggest sound I could, and I did that through just layering a crap ton of different synths. So I hope that's inspiring for you to see. Go ahead and give it a shot yourself. It takes some experimentation, but hopefully you learned some tips from what I showed you from this song to be able to apply that to your own music. And also hopefully it helps you enjoy this song that you can already listen to on Spotify. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you guys and your love for my music and your support, and it means so much to me. If you haven't already checked out my music on Spotify and you're watching me work for the first time, then go check it out. I think you'll like it. Share it with a friend. It all helps me out so much. I got a lot of really exciting stuff coming, so follow me on socials to keep updated with that. And, um, oh wait, am I forgetting something? Oh yeah, if you're not already subscribed, <laughs> dude, subscribe. It's not that hard. And that's all I got for this video. I will see you next time. Peace. Oh, 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 oh,